Good morning, everyone. I am excited to jump in for just a few minutes this morning and talk about the biggest thing that is standing between you and free publicity. I don't even have to know who you are or what you do or what your specialty is because I have spoken to enough people and worked with enough people to know that the biggest thing standing between you and publicity is really you asking for it. It's your willingness to send an email is actually what it comes down to. I always tell people, if you know how to send an email, then you know how to get free publicity. It really is that simple. And I know it because it's what happened to me. It's how I got almost everything amazing that I have in my life came because I sent an email. I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but when I tell you the story, you're going to understand. So the first big opportunity that I got was when I was still a full-time practicing attorney, and I sent an email to an editor at Forbes. I read his column on Forbes, and he also at that point had a TV show about sports business, and I had been blogging about legal and business issues in sports, and I emailed him to like comment on one of his articles, essentially. I wasn't asking to become a contributor. I didn't even know they had contributors. This was 10 years ago. That's how long I've been contributing to Forbes. So spoiler alert, I did become a contributor. Um, but it started with an email where I emailed an editor to give some feedback on something that he had written. And in the email, I just mentioned that the reason I was interested in the topic was that I was writing a book about it. It was Major League Baseball's collective bargaining agreement, which is boring to most people, but was something that I had become really passionate about I had written a legal journal article in law school about it and then had gotten this book deal to write about the history of collective bargaining in Major League Baseball which is a story for another day about how I got the book deal but when I emailed this editor at Forbes I really just wanted to comment on his article and in my email signature I had a link to my blog where I had been writing about legal um, and business issues in sports and he ended up checking out my blog and within a couple of days he had emailed me back and had invited me to contribute to Forbes so I didn't even ask for a contributing role when I initially got my contributing role at Forbes, but it was an email. And getting that role gave me this, you know, huge sense of confidence about what I knew. You know, I wouldn't have said at that point that I was an expert on sports business. I was a practicing attorney. Um, I did not practice in the sports space. Uh, you know, I had been blogging on my own little free WordPress blog that no one read. <laughs> so I wouldn't have necessarily called myself, well, I wouldn't have called myself an expert at that point, but he saw my reading and knew that I could provide value to the audience and invited me to be a contributor. So then I started thinking about, well, what else could I do? I'm already blogging about this. Now I'm going to be writing for Forbes. I've got this book deal. What else can I do in this space? And I decided to pitch myself for a regional sports network that was based in Atlanta, which is where I lived at the time. And I knew that they had a legal commentator on there sometimes. And I just noticed he wasn't really on anymore. And I didn't know what had happened with him, if he had retired or moved or what had happened. And so I found an email for the producer of the show on the show's website. And I emailed her and I just told her who I was and that I was writing this book and I had just started contributing to Forbes. I didn't even think I had a written piece for Forbes at that point. In fact, I still have the original email that I sent her. So I know what it says. And just told her to keep me in mind if they ever needed a legal expert to talk about sports. And she ended up scheduling me for me to come in and just meet with her and chat. And I went in and we hit it off. And she decided to put me on live television, which by the way was uh, horrifying <laughs> because I had never been on TV before. I knew nothing about being on TV. So if you're thinking like TV's way over your head and you're not ready for it yet, I wasn't ready for it either. I think it's one of those things like, I don't know, getting, you know, having kids or deciding to start your business. Like there's never a right time. Like you're never going to feel like, yes, I'm ready. And now is the time. <laughs> so just got to do it. So I went on live television. I still have my very first appearance on television, which by the way is horrifying to watch back now that I've done television for a decade. Um, but I did it and it was good enough that I ended up getting a weekly segment on this regional sports network to go on and be their legal and business expert on sports. Again, 
something I landed from an email. For those of you who weren't here at the very beginning of this live, what I said was the only thing standing between you and free publicity, whether that's speaking on a stage, TV, podcast interviews, guest blogs, writing for major publications, getting a feature in a magazine, whatever kind of publicity it is that you want, the only thing standing between you and that publicity is your willingness to send an email. You all know how to send emails. I know that you do. There's no way you know how to access a live stream and you don't know how to send an email. So you already have all the tools and all of the skills you need. Now, you might not know what to say in the email, but as long as you're willing to send the email, that is the important part. Hi, Monica. So uh, if you're here live, say hi. I'd love to know who's joining me. And if there is a kind of publicity you know you want, you want to speak on a stage, you want to be on a TV show, you want to do more podcast interviews, drop that in the comments and tell me what it is that you wish you were doing more of when it comes to publicity. And maybe it's that you wish you were doing at all. Maybe it's not more of, maybe you've never done it and you're trying to land that first opportunity. Let me know about that in the comments. So what you have to be willing to do is send the email. It's intimidating for a couple of reasons. First of all, you probably don't know who to send the email to. Now that's going to depend on what you are pitching, but I can tell you that sometimes we do send the email to the wrong person. I've sent the email to the wrong person for myself. I've done it for clients. And guess what? If you have structured the pitch in such a way that you are making your value obvious, that person who opens the email, if they're not the right person, they're going to tell you who to contact or they're going to forward it on to the right person. So don't get caught up in sending it to the right person. First of all, you can usually figure it out. There are submission guidelines if we're talking about a guest blog, if it's for a speaking opportunity, look for any sort of email for an event organizer on their website. If you're looking at an event, my first speaking gig was in a college classroom, so I was just emailing a professor that was listed as teaching a specific class where I thought that my content Content fit in TV you call the TV station you say who books guests for good morning Atlanta or whatever the show is they'll tell you who books guests it's not like a secret they want good guests they'll tell you who does the booking uh, Monica says she wants to do podcast interviews and get in articles and magazines great so for podcasts you are usually going to go to the host website and on their podcast page sometimes they'll tell you how to submit to be a guest some of them have um like a uh, a submission form that you would fill out some are just going to have an email they're going to tell you to pitch to some on their contact page will tell you how to pitch to be a guest some you'll, you're just going to fill out the contact form and that's fine too we book clients all the time by filling out the contact form um, for some reason people have this like block about filling out the contact form they think that that's not going to get to the person but it does we book people that way all the time so don't be afraid to submit it that way for um, articles and magazines if it's something you're gonna write look up the name of the publication and um, you know writer guidelines submission guidelines something like that if you google that you're probably gonna find a page where it talks about how to submit for that publication if you are trying to get someone else to write about you then you are gonna be reaching out directly to that writer or reporter and pitch them on doing a feature or using you as an expert source and quoting you so there are different styles of pitches but we find that even when we show people what a pitch looks like and we teach them how to write the pitch, still the biggest impediment is their willingness to send it. It's not so much that they don't know what to say. And look, my initial pitches that got me into um, TV, that got me my first book deal, that got me that first opportunity at Forbes, they're terrible emails. Like when I go back and look at them now, they look nothing like how I pitch clients now, not at all. But guess what? They still got the job done. Do I pitch better now? Absolutely. Do I think it gets me more opportunities and more opportunities for my clients? Absolutely. However, I can attest to the fact that terrible pitches can still get you in the door. The most important thing to put in that pitch is the value you are going to bring to their audience. If you've got that somewhere in there, you're like 90% of the way already. So I encourage you Make a list of those places where you want to be interviewed or featured or where you want to write. Start figuring out who the email is going to go to and write the email. The only thing standing between you and that free publicity that's going to get you more clients, allow you to impact more people's lives, is your willingness to send an email. That's it. 
So I encourage you to be willing to send that email this week, okay? And then come back and tell me about it. I wanna hear all about your success with sending that email because I know you're gonna have it once you're willing to start putting yourself out there. I hope you have a fabulous week. And if you have any questions, there's any way I can help you, you let me know. I absolutely not only pitch people, but I teach people how to pitch themselves in my group program, From the Shadows to the Spotlight. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you wanna work with me, you wanna learn how to put yourself out there for free publicity, there is a way for us to make that happen. So just get in touch with me and we will chat about it. Have a fantastic week. Thank you, everyone.